Hi everyone, for this installment of the anaesthetic assessment, let's go through the medication history. Now this is a really big topic, but again, I want to go through the basics and the most high yield principles to get you started. A good junior doctor will at least record the type, dose and dose frequency of a medication. Now often the very next step is to know which medications to cease or modify and which to continue. And that can be a tricky decision when you're starting out. Now all medications are important and can have implications for surgery and anesthesia. It's also true that most medications can be continued through the perioperative period for most patients. This is especially true for cardiac medications, respiratory meds, analgesics, and most medications managing a patient's chronic disease. However, the two classes of medications that need a bit more consideration are one, diabetic meds, and two, anticoagulants and related blood thinning medications. Now each hospital will generally have a guideline that goes into detail about the cessation regimes and alterations for these meds, so I'll go into the overall principles that you will use to make your decision. Diabetes is complicated perioperatively due to the prolonged fasting and variable nutritional intake in that patient. So in general, the risk of hypoglycemia is worse than the risk of hyperglycemia. So most recommendations stratify patients to diet controlled patients, patients on oral hypoglycemics, and patients needing insulin. Diet controlled diabetics generally require no adjustments and just to monitor their blood sugar levels perioperatively. Patients on oral hypoglycemics need to cease most of their diabetic meds on the day of surgery. Metformin may have to be ceased earlier if they're on it, for example 48 hours prior to surgery, because in some cases it has caused lactic acidosis. So the latest is that there's a new group of drugs called the SGLT2 inhibitors. Now they can be quite tricky to manage around the surgical period due to a risk of euglycemic ketoacidosis. So you may need to consult the treating specialist to cease this earlier and change to another medication prior to surgery. Now insulin regimes can also be tricky to manage as there are many different types of insulins. Generally, the advice is to cease short-acting insulins on the day of surgery, for example, ActRapid and NovaRapid, and continue to give long-acting insulins. If the insulin is in a mixture, a fraction of the dose can be given, but again, base this on your local guidelines and get advice. So the problem with anticoagulants is that the decision to cease or continue is based on the risk of bleeding from the surgery versus the risk of thromboembolic complications from the patient ceasing the anticoagulant. Again, most hospitals have comprehensive guidelines to help you decide, and knowing how to access these is the best first step. Again, a couple of rules. In general, very low bleed risk surgeries, like small skin lesion excisions or cataract operations, anticoagulants can be continued because there's really a very low risk of any surgical bleeding, and often ceasing these anticoagulants can be quite dangerous in these patients who are often unwell due to that process. For most other operations, the anticoagulants are ceased for the shortest time frame that's reasonable. Now where it gets tricky is when the surgical bleed risk is high and the risk of a thromboembolic complication is also high. So at this point, you need to discuss this with your supervisor, the surgeon and the medical team to help you make a decision. So these are some basic tips to start off with when assessing a patient's medications. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please check out the other videos on the anesthetic assessment for more tips and tricks. Thank you.